Brock Lesnar uh, talked about hunting and, 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 and trucks and stuff with his good buddy Stone Cold Steve Austin on the Stone Cold podcast last night on the WWE Network. Uh, and and, and uh, well, most of us have had a chance to digest that morsel. And it got a little, it got a little juicy towards the end. And we talked about things. And, and I know, uh, I, I think it was Matt Carlin's on the group was talking about. And hopefully you guys are in the chat too uh, to kind of discuss as well. But uh, this idea, you know, and I'm paraphrasing what I read, but I think they really kind of got it dead on. Uh, really, uh, Brock Lesnar is really impressive because, uh, you know, how many times do you say, I don't like people, I don't like people, I don't like people, which really does paint him as an asshole, yes, uh, but also just like, hey, guys, he's an introvert. What were we just talking about on WMS Gold? You know, um, what were we just talking if about? He wasn't, if he wasn't a big muscle-bound pile of muscles, he'd just be a nerd. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it also, nerd. it also doesn't help that he grew up, like, not near people. Right. Like, he grew up on a farm, and right. his main interaction was with, like, the animals and his family, presumably. And that's basically it. Like, most of us, we were born in suburbia, so we had to talk to people every day. I'm sure there are probably, like, weeks in the summertime where Brock Lesnar did not see people. But but the line the line that I read from one of you guys out here I'm, I'm so sorry I'm not going to be able to credit this at least right away uh, hopefully hopefully later show I'll be able to catch where it was um, but you know uh, the wrestling is a promotion where we've we've talked about especially Eamon, you and I with guys over on Indie Mayhem about how you interact with people backstage everybody you got to make sure you shake everybody's hands uh, and and the politics and how people how many people don't work for certain feds because maybe they got drunk and they weren't great people around other people right and that somebody right. like him that is an introvert that was not great with people still succeeded despite that in uh in such an industry I I think personally, and this maybe just, I mean, this is just my opinion. I think it comes from a point of, like, I agree that Brock Lesnar is clearly an introvert. He clearly doesn't like being around people. Um, I wouldn't say that doesn't mean he's necessarily not professional. No. Like, no. I think he, I think he knows how to do business. And I think a couple, a couple from his childhood, obviously, but I also think given, it feels like the way he was raised in the wrestling business is that he treats it like a business. He kind of treats it as, you know, go get all the money that you can, you know, get all the success that you can in wrestling, but don't don't act like this is something bigger than what it is. Mm -hmm. D you know, don't hold on to the fact that, you know, the people around you are your friends or your family or anything like that. You know, it's it's a business. It's a job. He said it a lot during the interview. He's like, I got I, you know, I treat it as if I'm going to work. You know, we clock in and clock out. People clock in and clock out all the time. I just do the same thing. Right. You right, know? right. Stone Cold is a work friend, basically. <laughs> yeah. And that's about it. <laughs> what, what, what will be? No, it, I, I, I love that that's, uh, that's their relationship. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's just some guy I work with. Yeah, yeah, basically, because they're like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, my work friends, Steve, Mark, and Glenn. Yeah, they're just hanging out. And exactly. Paul, gotta love Paul. I mean, Paul's kind of my boss, but still, he's a good guy. It's like, like he also kept referring to the Rockets, Dwayne. Like, I feel like that. I mean, I feel like that's for a reason. Like, he sees them as who they are. He sees them. He sees them as coworkers. He sees them as anything beyond that. I think the only person in wrestling he sees as an actual friend is Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. Yep. Probably Angle too. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say Angle. I'm sure he and Angle probably had a a closer. Like I'm sure they didn't talk about much because obvious reasons. But I'm sure he and Angle got along really well. It sounds like they had a very competitive relationship. They they kind of sound like Goku and Vegeta. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there was I don't I I believe in Angle's book. There was a discussion about the one time that they uh, they sh they did a shoot fight, uh, like like before a Raw sometime. They got in the ring and just kind of went at it. And how uh, how humbled uh, Brock was afterwards after that one. Uh, so I mean, you gotta look. I mean, yo, Brock looked huge next to Angle in that match, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and, and and certainly, I, I think. Well, and also Angle. <laughs> Hey, Angle uh, uh, practiced for basically practiced for the Olympics by going to Russia and fighting Russians who are very much bigger than him. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like that was just how he learned to do it. So somebody like Brock was probably easy pickings for, for him in that kind of context. Cause well, uh, Brock was awesome and he was a multi-time NCAA champion that was still against other people in the NCAA, not other countries that were larger yeah. than him. Um, not that I don't know how many people would have had much size on them at that point, but, um, anyways, no, I, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a good show. I mean, it wasn't terribly revealing. I thought, yeah. Uh, I mean, that whole kind of side of things like like, no, this is the way I am. You know, um, they really got into a bit about the UFC. Uh, it was very frank about things about his conversations with Vince and how they kind of left things. Um, even I and that was an, and I think I think Eamon, you know, and I think you're alluding to this a little bit, too. But you get I think us wrestling fans may be offended by it because he's not passionate about the thing that he's doing. Yeah. But he is. But it's not in the way that we that we want him to be passionate. The way we're he, passionate about things, right? That's true. I, I I consider him. I consider him along the same mindset as like a Kevin Nash, who's always the guy that's very adamant of like this is a business. True. Uh, you know, God forbid I treat this like a business and I look to make money. You yeah, know, and like, I can understand that aspect of it. Right. Yeah, like Kevin Nash always said, you can make friends or you can make money, and I already have enough friends, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, yeah like you gotta mention it was a fairly pedestrian podcast. The only juicy stuff, juiciest stuff that came from it was, um, I feel like uh, when they mentioned the Brock Angle match at WrestleMania 19, and Brock was very adamant in saying that somebody told him to do the uh, the uh, shooting star press. Hmm. Yeah, the sh- <laughs> I still want to know who it was. So that was interesting. I want to know who it was because he wouldn't throw the name under the bus, but I'm curious. Could have been Vince. You never know. It could have been. Possibly. Could have been an Angle, or uh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Kurt Henning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, want Henning see, I want to see the training. I want to see the training between Brock Lesnar and Kurt Henning. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Yeah. that sounds like it would have been a lot of fun. Somewhere, somewhere, I do have a DVD of it before they were stars with the Minnesota Wrecking Crew of uh, him and Shelton Benjamin in a match. I'm going to have to Benjamin got a plug on the podcast. So I'm Benjamin, who was not here with... He said, like, not with us anymore. Like, as if he's well, dead no, or he something. Wasn't, he wasn't... He well, wasn't I know, I know. Graphic. They had a graphic of... Yeah, they didn't show up on the graphic. ...of <laughs> prototype uh, Leviathan, Randy Orton, and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. But, the only, and the only other interesting part was, uh, like, uh, Austin tried to bring up the, uh, the lawsuit between him and WWE when Lesnar left after WrestleMania. Yeah. and he was just kind of like I don't want to talk about that mm-hmm. like he was kind of they, they skirted it very much but uh, yeah I, it, other than that it was <laughs> they talked a lot about southern things mm-hmm. and they, talked and a they lot never about shooting guns and they never like went to the place that the uh, Heyman and Austin podcast went yeah where like right at the end you know they turned it into a, a, a work shoot or whatever where like there was possibility of a match and Brock was just like, Nope, I'm good. And the undertaker. And that's basically it. And they never, they didn't even talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it. it cut a mini promo at the end and that was it basically. Right. So yeah. he's like, Oh yeah. Like he went into a different mode and that was it. And, and didn't really talk about undertaker respect for undertaker, et cetera. He did as mentioned in the chat room, uh, uh, Carlin, Matt Carlin's like the, uh, he did like him talking about riding with Taker and King. Can you imagine that crew crammed into a, some mid-sized rental car? Actually, probably got a <laughs> sedan. So, there you go. Uh, uh, Garza, uh, I, is, I, oh, go ahead. I think it's incredible that this even happens. That mm-hmm. we have these uh, these interviews and these pod, like Steve Austin podcasts and stuff nowadays. Because I remember a time when I found out that uh, Bret Hart would occasionally go down to Texas and hang out with Steve Austin and bullshit about the old days. Yeah, and I was yeah. fucking blown away. <laughs> and now that's just such a common thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, just the amount in such a short period of time that wrestling has been willing to pull back the curtain on uh, on the wrestlers' lives and things like that. It's 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 really fascinating to look at in perspective. Mm-hmm. Especially, well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get even more of that with uh, Breaking Ground, right? And uh, that's gonna be fantastic. I cannot. It's ten weeks and narrated by William Shatner for Christ's oh. sake. That, that's gonna be awesome. Like that's that may literally be one of the best things the network will ever do, right? 
right? Yeah, they're putting a lot into it, and I think a pretty serious producer is behind it too, right? I, I, uh, I didn't know who the producer was. I, I I read William Shatner and I stopped. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> I, I don't care. You need nothing else beyond that, right? Like, if he starts singing Sasha Banks's theme song, <laughs> I, I'm game over. I'm out. I'm out. I, I I will. That that's it. That's it. I will just listen to that eternally on a loop forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had something else here. Oh, uh, uh, Carlin's is saying, uh, Hennig teaching Brock to hit the no look half court basketball shots and throw touchdowns to himself. <laughs> oh, I did like uh, Brock saying how difficult the NFL training camp was. Yes, which is funny since I, the I NFL that people was really interesting. Which was the NFL people coming and say how hard wrestling training is. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's really interesting. <laughs> So um, yeah, like Brock saying that that kind of humbled him because it was the first time he really wasn't good at something like that was really interesting to me. I'm like, wow, that must have been incredibly difficult because he really wanted to do that. Like right. he left a WrestleMania payday for that. Right. Right. But also really interesting. And, and, and he he definitely finds himself in a spot. A lot of people don't where he says, I like being in the ring. I don't like to travel. Well, Which, I, think, yeah. I think that's a lot of people like. Yeah, yeah, but 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 again, you know, he was, but I mean, again, he's not a guy that he loved it. He loved doing it, but he didn't have the passion to push through all the rest of that stuff. I mean, the guy was had been in the business for like two years in WWE. What was he around for? Maybe two years before that in in, in developmental, maybe. Probably so, not even that long. I mean, I mean, just thinking that versus the people like uh, Kevin Owens that took fifteen years to get to this point. You know, uh, I mean, I just. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to think less of, of a Brock Lesnar because of that. Like he made a decision. You just like this isn't for me. You know, this, this is the, I, this this isn't worth that. You know, making the money is nice, but I can go try something else. And he made himself a good bit of money over those two years and had the option to go do something else. Right. And maybe that's the I, other I, thing. I think there's aspects where where you can kind of see. I mean, people could call Brock selfish or whatever, but there's also aspects of, of, of humbleness from him. Like. Like in, in certain aspects, like when you mentioned when he was starting out in wrestling, like like he had the I feel there was a humble aspect to him, mm-hmm. you know, just because he wasn't a people person, just because he was like he didn't like the everything surrounding wrestling. I do think he was there were there were parts of him that were still very humble, right? You know, right, right. But it was interesting looking to him. It wasn't as controversial as I feel like uh, they were making it up to be. Um. Yeah. Sometimes Stone Cold just likes to talk about hunting with his guests. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> you know. It's it's fine. You know. And uh, it, we'll see. We'll see how, how they keep going. I mean, that, that's why I can't listen to his podcast on a regular basis in general. You know, mm-hmm. it just doesn't hit a chord with me like that, uh, like a Colt Cabana one does. So, and and I've heard people saying how Colt Cabana's podcast does really kind of rubs them the wrong way these days too. So, I don't know. Uh, I think I it. Oh, never mind. That's what? totally off topic. Never mind. That's fine. I don't know. Where, where, what do you got going on? I, I was I Colt Cabana in podcast. So I was curious if anybody here had seen the uh, the episode of Marin that Colt Cabana was oh, on. Oh no, not yet, not yet. He was talking about that on the recent one. I want to check that out for sure. Yeah. So whenever whenever I get a slice of time to actually sit down and watch something, I <laughs> I go through my like little mental Rolodex list, and I always forget that one. Mm-hmm. I want to see it eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, uh, all right. On that note, hey, let's uh, uh, first let's give a shout out to our buddies at Slice on Broadway. They're up here. Uh, if you're around Pittsburgh, I know a few of you are. A lot of you are not, but that's okay. A lot of you visit Pittsburgh for one reason or another, maybe a business, just to be a pal, or whatever the case may be. Or, uh, I mean, Mad Mike is going to be coming here to Pittsburgh in a few weeks. You got to be stopping by for some slice, buddy. Sorg, Sorg, I'm gonna go both slice on Broadway locations. Both locations. I'm, I'm, I'm oh go man, both. I'm gonna go both. And you know what? I'm gonna compare them. And guess what? They're both gonna be fantastic. Yes, they are. Well, they better both be fantastic. They got the same people between the two locations, so more or less. So there's definitely a little bit of a um, uh, 